What's up guys, my name is Ryan and I want to show you some of my favorite places in the enchanting country of France. So here is my French top 10. France is known all around the world for its endless history and jaw-dropping scenery. From the towering French Alps to the Mediterranean coast of the French Riviera, France has so much to offer. Let's start this video off at the picturesque city of Anzi. Now Anzi is located at the foot of the Alps. It's famous for its medieval old town and it's been nicknamed the Venice of the Alps thanks to its canals. Now the city is just absolutely magical, but what I love about the region is Lake Anzi. It's known as one of the cleanest lakes in all of Europe and I just love the surrounding mountains. I mean, I just can't think of a better place to enjoy on a hot summer day. Now, one of the crowning features of the area is the Chateau de Menthon Saint Bernard. The castle began construction back in the 13th century and it's just hard to beat the view of this medieval castle. After Anzi, we're gonna head over to the nearby French Alps. Now this is definitely my favorite region in all of France. It's home to the incredibly massive Mont Blanc, which is the highest mountain in all the Alps at 15,774 feet. If you wanna get a close up view to Mont Blanc without the hiking, you can visit the Agui du Midi. Now special thanks to my friend Guillaume Rugolo for helping me out with footage. I'll link his channel in the description below. Now the Agui du Midi, was constructed back in 1955 and when you see it you just can't fathom how they were able to build this on top of a mountaintop. Now to get there you can take a 20 minute cable car ride which holds the world record for the highest vertical ascent by a cable car with an elevation gain of 9,000 feet. Now when you reach the top you'll be able to witness one of the best 360 views in all the Alps. Now if you're into hiking you'll have to experience the Tour du Mont Blanc. It's a roughly 170 kilometer trek that loops around Mont Blanc. You'll not only hike in France but you'll also go through Italy and Switzerland. If you hike at a decent pace, you can expect to complete the loop in about 10 days. If I can travel to France this summer, I definitely want to attempt the Tour de Mont Blanc. I mean, literally just looks like pure paradise out there. After the Alps, we're going to head over to the Alsace region. Now located in eastern France, bordering Germany and Switzerland, the Alsace region is famous for its fairy tale cities, wine country, and rich history. Over the centuries, the region has alternated between French and German control, and today it represents a mix of those cultures. The capital of Alsace is Strasbourg. It's home to the formal seat of the European Parliament. Another enchanting city in the region is Colmar. Colmar looks like something straight out of a Disney movie. The city's old town is lined with timber medieval buildings. I love the canal that runs throughout the city. It just adds to the magic of the place. If you want to escape the cities, you can experience the Alsace wine route. It's a 170 kilometer long route that passes through some of France's greatest wine country and picturesque towns. One of my favorites is the quaint village of Ricquevier. It's believed to be the village that inspired the town from Beauty and the Beast. Even if you don't drink wine like me, it's impossible to not fall in love with this region of France. After, we're going to France's capital of Paris. Now, since the 17th century, Paris has been Europe's major center of finance, diplomacy, fashion, and the arts. Paris is one of the world's most visited cities, and with all its attractions and fascinating history, it's easy to see why. Paris's most recognizable attraction is the Eiffel Tower. It was built in 1889 for the World Fair. The Eiffel Tower is 324 meter high, which made it the tallest man-made structure in the world until 1930. You can take an hour up there to get an incredible 360 panoramic view of all of Paris. Another popular attraction is the Louvre Museum. It's the world's largest art museum and it's home to Da Vinci's Mona Lisa. You can also take a drive around the Arc de Triomphe or walk the grounds of the Palace of Versailles. And there's just so much to see in this grand city. If you want a road trip outside the capital, you can head to France's northern coast, visit the coastal town of Etretat. Located about three hours outside of Paris, Etretat is famous for its white cliffs and rock formations. One of the most well-known is the Falaise de Aval Arch. It has such a unique shape. I guess you could say they are the French cousins of old hairy rocks. While we're still on the coast, we're going to visit the magical island of Mont Saint-Michel. 
Now located one kilometer off the coast of France, Mont Saint-Michel is one of the most magical destinations in all of Europe. The island is full of small shops and homes with a monastery perched on the top of the island's highest point. The construction of the monastery began in the 10th century and was finished in 1523 due to its strategic position and dangerous changing tides. The island remained protected throughout history. Today, Mont Saint-Michel is one of France's most popular tourist destinations. If you're ever in northern France or Paris, you really need to visit this magical island. After, we're going to head to the neighboring region of Brittany. Now, located on the northwestern tip of France, Brittany is full of rugged beaches and countless lighthouses. One thing that is particularly fascinating about Brittany is its presence of megalithic monuments. There are thousands of stones scattered around the region, ranging from ancient tombs to single standing stones that were arranged by Neolithic people over 7,000 years ago. I mean, it's just pretty interesting if you ask me. Now aside from the ancient megaliths, Brittany is home to some stunning coastal towns. One of my favorites is Le Conque. It's an ideal maritime city with a picturesque harbor. One of the highlights of the area is the Kermovan Lighthouse. I mean, just such a beautiful setting. Aside from Le Conque, Brittany is full of hundreds of seaside towns and beaches just waiting to be discovered. After, let's head over to the medieval fortress of Carcassonne. Now, when I imagine medieval Europe, I don't think there's a better place that exemplifies it better than this fortified city. Located in southern France, Carcassonne began as a Roman fortified hilltop and was given to the Visigoths in the 5th century who continued to fortify and build the city. Throughout the centuries, Carcassonne proved to be an impregnable fortress as army after army failed to overtake the protected city. Today, the city consists of 53 towers that are protected by its two outer walls. It remains as one of Europe's greatest medieval gems. While we're still on the topic of medieval cities, we're going to head over to Uz. Now located about two and a half hours from Carcassonne, Uces is a small town with quite the medieval charm. What I love about Uces is the Duke's Castle. It has such a unique look to it. The main tower with its four mini spire gives off medieval vibes. Now while you're in Uces, you can make the short 15 minute drive to the ancient Roman aqueduct Pont du Gard. It's over 2,000 years old and carried water over 50 kilometers to a Roman colony. It's the highest of all Roman aqueducts and it's one of the most well preserved. Another nearby place to visit visit is Avignon. It's a stunning French medieval city full of intriguing architecture and history. After, we're going to head down to southern France to the French Riviera, now located on the southeast corner of France. I have to say that the French Riviera is home to some of the world's best coastline. It's the perfect contrast between mountains and the Mediterranean Ocean. One stunning city on the French Riviera is Monton. It's a stunning coastal city sandwiched between Monaco and the Italian border. I just love its ports with the backdrop of the green mountains. And compared to other popular cities on the Riviera, such as Nice or Cannes, this one's not as crowded, so it's a perfect place to visit to escape the crowds. Now, if you're looking for some medieval vibes, you can visit the nearby hilltop village of Es. The village dates back to the 1300s, and when you explore the city, you'll feel like you're going back in time. You can hike to the summit on the town with a fortress on top, and you'll get some of the best views of the French Riviera. Well, that is it for my France top 10. I mean, there's just so many beautiful places that I couldn't cover in this video, so I'll have to do a part two. Let me know where your favorite place is in France in the comments below. I also started a relaxation channel where I post hour long films with calm music to bring some peace and nature in your life. I did one on France, I think you'll enjoy. You can find me on TikTok and Instagram at Shirley.films. It's Ryan, and we will see you later.